If Starbase's launch pad damage from the first orbital flight of Starship is now SpaceX's biggest concern, the effectiveness of the heat shield will certainly provide some comfort. Honestly, the use of the heat shield had been considered one of the biggest problems for Starship's testing. During last year's testing of Ship 24, there were instances where tiles had cracked and peeled off, but during the orbital flight, I was pleasantly surprised by the tenacity of the heat shields. Unfortunately, we were unable to witness the re-entry of this flight due to the unprecedented launch pad damage, which led to the prevention of separation and the orbital flight phases. However, this truly shows SpaceX's progress. It's also a big achievement. When traveling at more than 7 kilometers a second and generating temperatures of over 1600 degrees Celsius, a spacecraft hurtles towards the ground carrying people and equipment. Its exterior glows red hot from the heat generated by friction with the atmosphere. By all accounts, it should be melting, but thanks to its heat shields, it doesn't. These heat shields work by covering a large, round surface with compounds that when superheated during re-entry, burn off. This dissipates the heat as the material is burnt away. Furthermore, a gassy barrier forms that further insulates from the heat. Let's rewind a couple of decades to the 1980s. Extensive tile damage was observed by ground crews after the shuttle Atlantis touched down at Edwards Air Force Base in December of 1988. STS-27 was a Department of Defense flight and the launch of a surveillance satellite for the National Reconnaissance Office and the CIA. Atlas sustained heavy damage to its heat shield during STS-27, suffering over 700 damaged or missing tiles. You can see the tile damage in this picture. Note the white pockmarks scattered along the black tiles on the near side of the shuttle. The damage was bad enough to shake veteran astronaut Robert Hoot Gibson, who said to himself, we are going to die. Thankfully, as Gibson explained, there was a steel plate that took the brunt of the heat from re-entry. So how did SpaceX improve upon this design? SpaceX has spent a long time developing a heat shield capable of safely returning orbital starships back to Earth. These tiles are designed to protect the rocket during atmospheric entry. The ship will enter Mars's atmosphere at speeds of around 27,000 kilometers per hour. It will slow itself down using a belly flop maneuver similar to the skydiving technique. Starship will have to withstand some high temperatures. The air hitting the space shuttle during re-entry reached around 1,650 degrees Celsius as it compressed against the surface. Perseverance, NASA's latest Mars rover, reached similarly toasty temperatures of around 1,300 degrees Celsius when it entered the planet's atmosphere in February. SpaceX chose stainless steel for the Starship to better protect against those high temperatures. In a January 2019 interview with Popular Mechanics, Musk explained that aluminum and carbon fiber operate in a steady state up to around 150 degrees Celsius. Stainless steel, on the other hand, can reach up to 870 degrees Celsius. That's an improvement, but it means the steel will need some help to endure a landing. The crucial aspect is that Starship's tiles are affixed to the stainless steel exterior using studs. Elon also fixed the problem with the missing tiles on Starship by inserting a white flexible ceramic fiber mat between the back of the tile and the stainless steel of the Starship. That mat is probably something like Cal Wool 3000, which can be used up to approximately 1530 degrees Celsius without fail. Even if one or more tiles fall off, that mat will be adhered to the ship. In theory, Starship's structure can thus withstand and remain functional at temperatures approaching 800 degrees Celsius, whereas the shuttle's heat shield had to keep the vehicle's aluminum structure below around 180 degrees Celsius. Of course, so far, Starship has yet to attempt to survive an orbital velocity re-entry with some 25,000 ceramic heat shield tiles mounted directly to its steel skin. But if successful, SpaceX's ultra-simple design could give Starship massive advantages over the shuttle, which ultimately proved to be more dangerous than traditional crew capsules and about as expensive as a similarly capable expendable rocket. And it's really worth waiting for the second flight test. Next on the news for this episode, Falcon Heavy is ready for launch today, Thursday, April 27th. SpaceX rolled a Falcon Heavy rocket back to its launch pad in Florida Tuesday night for liftoff Thursday with a high-power Viasat broadband satellite following an eight-day delay for a launch vehicle engine swap. The Falcon Heavy rocket is scheduled for launch at 7.29 p.m. EDT or 11.29 p.m. UTC Thursday with Viasat 3 Americas, a large Boeing-built internet satellite and two small rideshare payloads. SpaceX's heavy lifter will place the satellites into a circular orbit near a geostationary altitude nearly 36,000 kilometers above Earth.
SpaceX announced Wednesday it would forego a launch opportunity Wednesday evening for the Falcon Heavy mission. The company did not give a reason for the delay. It's the second trip to the launch pad for this Falcon Heavy rocket, following a test firing of its 27 main engines on April 13th. Following the hold down firing, SpaceX rolled the rocket back to the hangar for attachment of its payload fairing containing the Viasat 3 Americas satellite and two rideshare spacecraft. At that time, officials planned to launch the mission on April 18th, but SpaceX announced an eight-day delay to April 26th without giving reason. Multiple sources said managers ordered the delay to replace at least one engine on the rocket after the test firing. The static fire test provides an opportunity for SpaceX engineers to make sure all launch vehicles and ground systems are working properly before proceeding into a real countdown. SpaceX's ground crew removed the rocket from its transporter slash erector for the engine swap, then reinstalled the Falcon Heavy on its carrier structure for the return to Pad 39A Tuesday. Technicians also installed the payload fairing with the mission's three satellite passengers. The mission will be the sixth launch of a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket since 2018, and the second of as many as five Falcon Heavy flights the company plans this year. It's the first Falcon Heavy launch in which SpaceX will intentionally dispose of all three first stage boosters. SpaceX is dedicating all of the rocket's propellant to deploying the roughly six metric ton Viasat three America satellite and its co-passengers into a near geosynchronous orbit. Take about six hours to reach its targeted orbit requiring three burns by the upper stage engine. Direct insertion into geosynchronous orbit is one of the most challenging mission types in the launch industry. The profile requires extended battery life on the upper stage, plus a custom band of gray thermal paint on the rocket to help ensure the kerosene fuel does not freeze during the hours spent in the cold environment of space. And for our last bit of news, astronomers snapped the first ever direct image of a black hole blasting out a powerful jet. The new photo features the monstrous super heavy black hole at the heart of the galaxy Messier 87, or M87, the first black hole ever directly imaged by humanity. The image shows precisely for the first time how the base of such an astrophysical jet moving at speeds approaching that of light connects to matter swirling around a supermassive black hole before being fed to its surface, a process astronomers call accretion. Previous images of M87's central black hole had managed to capture the jet it emits and the supermassive black hole itself, but not the two features together. This new image completes the picture by showing the region around the black hole and the jet at the same time. Study team member Jae Young Kim of Gyeongbuk National University in South Korea and the Max Planck Institute for Radio Astronomy said in a statement. These feeding monsters are blasting out powerful jets of matter that move at near light speed and can extend for many thousands of light years, sometimes well beyond the boundaries of the galaxies that house them. How these supermassive black holes do this isn't quite fully understood, however. In addition to showing the jet as it emerges from this supermassive black hole, the new image also shows what scientists call the shadow of the black hole. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you soon.